where it shall blessings upon the sick and the shedding, the locked out, some of the churches disadvantaged. Those who don't even know you in the party with us singers this morning, we ask you to touch them, more gracious God, because they need your touch. They need your anointing. They need your power, oh gracious God. We ask that you bless this community, that you move in this place in this time. We ask that you move on this independent state. This 4th of July, while we still wait to become the United States of America that we need to be. Yeah. We ask that you touch up on the heel, oh precious God, in the middle of all the chaos and the chaotic movement that's there. We know that you can come through. Yeah. We know that you can move. Yeah. We know that you can touch and turn hearts to help people, yeah. your people, oh precious God. We all in this prayer of you. So bring us together, oh gracious God, and community that we can build and stand strong. And when you do that, God, we'll give your name the honor, the praise, and the glory. We ask this morning that you touch us and bless the preacher. And bless the preacher's word and let it go forth with power and authority. All in the matchless name of Jesus, our Lord, our Savior. And our Christ. So we say it together. Amen. 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 Let us join in singing number 594 when we all get to heaven. That's a moment of praise. A moment of praise means it's celebratory. Amen. So we got something to celebrate this morning. So let us. Lift up our hearts and lift up our spirits and lift up our hands and give some praise to God this morning.
we will sing and shout the victory. Amen. Good morning, Reverend Hagler. Good morning. Good morning and welcome, Reverend Dr. Luther Holland. Good morning, our public guest, and Frey, Faith, Faith Raymond, our first Sunday choir and musicians. Good morning. And good morning to our Plymouth Congregation United Church of Christ members. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Whitney Brown, and I'm a member of the Greeters Ministry. I don't have any registered names right now, but if you are visiting with us today, would you please stand at this time and be acknowledged? Good morning. Welcome. <coughs> On behalf of our pastors and pastoral staff, the officers and members of Plymouth Congregational United Church of Christ, we welcome you to our service. We hope that the spoken word, the sincere prayers, the sacred music, and the warm fellowship will be of such that you'll be touched and come back and visit with us again. I want to leave you with an inspirational word for today. And it's called Master of the Way by Gertrude B. McLean. Dear Lord of all my sunny days, I raise my voice in joy and praise. I see the beauty of your earth as once again there is rebirth. I hear the little birds that sing and lift my voice to thee, my king. The fragrant flowers along my way add color to my life each day. But life must have some cloudy days. There may be storms along my way. It seems the birds forget to sing, and to you promises I will cling. Dear Lord, you promise you will be my anchor on life's stormy sea, my shepherd and my guide each day, the light before me all the way. You send the sunshine and the rain, you share our joy and all our pain. We bow our heads to thee in prayer, assured that you are always there. Dear Lord, I thank you for your love, the blessings from your throne above, you are my strength from day to day, O Lord and Master of my way. May you have a blessed week. Amen. 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 Sister Waverly Brown lifted up our greeting and welcome of us all this morning. And so that that same spirit, Sister Brown, in the love of Jesus Christ, I also welcome to you to Plymouth Congregation of the United Church of Christ if you're visiting with us. And for part of the family, it's again, it's good to be once uh, again gathered in the household of faith. I want to uh, just recognize also uh, Reverend Luther Hobbs' wife, Sister Zelda Hobbs, who stood up uh, earlier, uh, is with us uh, in Baltimore. So we came over this morning, and I said uh, uh, to come here and be in worship this morning. There's a great gathering that's taking place in, in Baltimore. Uh, the next few days, and that's the United Church of Christ family that's gathered together in convention. Uh, but uh, I just needed to be here, wanted to be here uh, with us on this uh, first Sunday in July as we shifted our worship time uh, uh, to be here in the household of faith. Uh, and the road was good coming in from Baltimore this morning. Amen. All the people who have gotten out of town, I guess, have gotten out of town and they're in place. And I pray that they had a good trip as well. But one thing I, I do know is that is that when the road is open and, and I can make it down the road within the speed limit, I should have. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and, and drive safe and sound. I know that God is truly a great God, a God that protects us and holds us all in the palm of God's hands. And sister, brother, I don't know about you, but I want to give praise to God for things large right. and small. I want to give praise to God because I know He brings us through. I, I know He watches over us. I know He keeps us from week to week and day to day. By the tender mercies of God, we find ourselves still here, clothed and in our right mind. And you know what God has done for you in this week, and you need to give God some praise because you need to just thank the Lord. So let God go to you and keep you to carry you through and bless you every step of the way. Because we know how easy it is to take things for granted, man. And we just go through a day, we go through a week, uh, we don't reflect this more to the next day. But when we come into this time of worship, it's a, it's a moment in which
settle down and we look back and see all of the things that God has provided for us and all of the ways in which the Lord has blessed us and all the ways in which God has brought us through. And that's what we give praise for. We give praise to the Lord for more time.
Good morning, Reverend Hagler, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther Holland, and our beautiful choirs and membership and friends of Plymouth. I am the co-leader of the July Calendar Club, along with Gloria Norris. Unfortunately, Gloria cannot be with us today, and I think some of our members are in Baltimore. However, we're doing our July greetings a little differently. We're not making a contribution to the church today. However, our July personality is Faith. And Faith, would you please come forward? And at the time that we will make our presentation, Faith will be away at a summer program as she begins her undergraduate college experience. So on behalf of the July Calendar Club, we'd like to acknowledge our July personality, Faith Freeman, and we just would like to give you a little token as you celebrate your birthday in the month of July. Thank you, Faith. And 
And uh, Reverend William Barber preached at that. And the other Barber who preached our number of a couple of revivals here. Uh, he was the keynote uh, uh, um, last night. And uh, I think uh, he, he shook up the United Church Press. Amen. Because if, if, you know, if you know Barber, Barber <coughs> comes with history as well as theology and preaching at and it's it not far from being Pentecostal. So when it got to the end, he started quaking and shaking up there. And, and, uh, and I'm not sure if the United Church of Christ understood what was going on at first, uh, but they finally got filled with the Spirit in, in time and, and were on their feet. But he did a powerful, powerful, uh, blessed job last night. And we just give thanks for uh, Reverend William Barber and his call to action that he's building for in 2018. Uh, to uh, try to uh, create uh, a movement in, what is it, 26 cities? In 26 cities uh, to take place uh, uh, over the course of 2018 so that there can be a, a challenge uh, to the extreme politics that are going on in our country right now. And, right. and, and you know it needs to be challenged, right? It needs right. to be challenged. I mean, we can't just sit by and, and, and hope that somebody might get saved uh, uh, you know, sometimes you got to take people to the water, kick it and scream, right? Uh, and so it's a matter of us standing up and truly being uh, the people of God, the prophets of God that that that, that speak about justice and and and, and try to protect voting rights, to try to protect the elderly, and try to protect those who are poor. Because you know, it's an attack right now that is going on on everyone. Just like this past week, we were down at. Uh, the capital grounds, uh, because HUD is trying to cut out, uh, to, to cut 202 funding. 202 funding at that building, that senior building built across the street. They want to get rid of uh, uh, vouchers for Section 8 housing. A whole lot of people would be homeless if it wasn't for vouchers. All of these kinds of things that are going down, including the health care, we know all about that. Uh, and, and Sister and Brother, uh, 202 program. Uh, basically house the elderly, right. the elderly, yeah. right? And, 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 and so, that, so it's an attack upon the elderly, it's an attack upon voting rights, it's, and it goes right on down the line, one thing is being attacked after another, and, and we just can't sort of sit by and hope that, 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 that this time will go live on its own because uh, we have to stand up and challenge it with all of uh, our fire, all of our being. And so God, uh, I pray, will watch over us as we really and truly challenge what needs to be challenged at this time in our culture, in our society, in this country. It's now that time as we prepare to go forward, to bring our tithes, our gifts, our offerings into the Lord, Lord's house. Isn't that right? Y'all should be cheering. I said, yes, I want to give. Please, Lord, bring this opportunity for me to give. What took you so long to ask that I give? Right? And you know, that, that, it is, it, the Lord loves a joyful giver. Amen. Amen. And, and, and we find out, we find out that when we move forth in faith, that God blesses us with the amount of faith that we bring to the action. The amount of faith, you know, that, that, that means that we believe uh, uh, that, 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 that there is no more common than we, we, we give out of a spirit of scarcity. And you rest assured that the blessings will be scarce. But if we move forth and we give out of great expectation, great expectation, then God will fill our cup to an overflow. Somebody say thank you all. Thank you all. Say thank you Lord for blessing me. Thank you Lord for filling me. And thank you Lord for this opportunity to give. Thank you Lord for this opportunity to give. Trustees, if you come forth to receive these times and offers. Chair of the men's ministry. 
And I understand the minister ministry is going to have a special meeting on Saturday. Is that correct? Yes. On Saturday, what time? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock on Saturday. A special call men's meeting on Saturday at nine o'clock. Men, if you could just make a note of that. Amen. Make a note of that. Uh, uh, Stephen, make a note of that.
Amen. As we come to this teaching time this morning, I want to uh, uh, just uh, say that a number of our church members are in Baltimore volunteering, and I have seen just about all of them since the Synod started. Uh, you know, you got Cheryl and Vanita Phillips, and I uh, hope I don't miss nobody, Ina Slaughter, Wilmertine, I've seen there, I've seen Danielle there, I've seen uh, 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 Sister Juanita Cooper over there, Brother Bill Cooper over there, uh, and, uh, and, and I heard rumors of some other folks, I ain't seen them over there yet, but I'd heard rumors that they're there. Uh, but uh, I give thanks for such a rich uh, Plymouth presence over there at, uh, at General Synod. And since I was over at General Synod and uh, floating around the edges there, and, uh, I decided that I was going to uh, uh, press into service uh, a preacher for this morning, uh, Reverend Dr. Luther Holland. Uh, and Reverend Dr. Luther Holland, he was and is retired uh, as the pastor of the Congregational Church of Park Manor in Chicago. But it's not only in Chicago because he also hung around here at Plymouth Church years ago when he was a baby in diapers uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, going to Howard uh, and, uh, and has moved on to numbers of positions in the United Church of Christ as, uh, uh, as his uh, career flourished and moved. Uh, and, uh, and I've known uh, Brother Luther Holland, I don't know how many years uh, that God has cursed me to know, I mean, God has blessed me to know you. <laughs> And uh, we, we talk like this all the time, and you, you, right? Sit them down. But we give, we, give, we give praise to God for Reverend Dr. Luther Holland uh, coming to bless us with a message this morning. And also give uh, thanks for uh, Reverend Oscar uh, Vonadu, who was here visiting uh, uh, from Michigan. Uh, what was it, Benton Harbor? Benton Harbor, Michigan. Amen. All right. The, uh, uh, and so we give thanks for this pastor who, who, who called me late last night, wanted to make sure that I picked him up before I headed back to D.C. here uh, to come and be in worship with us. And I just give thanks for, for that privilege and ability to pick you up. Uh, and, uh, and so we'll, we'll both talk and critique Reverend Holland on his sermon uh, after he finished the day on our way back up. So you need to do something. That, that, that we don't have to pick on you about, all right? Amen. And again, uh, I just give praise to God uh, as, uh, as uh, that great cloud of witnesses gather in Baltimore uh, for this uh, blessed time that goes on through uh, the 4th of July. Uh, and so uh, we rejoice in just being able to pray, sing, worship, learn about issues, how we can address those. Uh, and uh, so I want to introduce to you now, and he's going to lift up the scripture this morning. Is that right, Reverend? And then go right into your word, uh, Reverend Dr. Luther Holland. Would you receive him as he comes forward? United Church of Christ for the 25 years you've had to put up with this character. Uh, to show you how good God is, y'all still here. Show you how prayer works, y'all still here. Uh, that's a tall drink of water, so it takes a tall drinking of a lot of prayer at the river. Someone asked me yesterday, why are you going into D.C. to preach? You retired. Uh, and I said, it's homecoming for me. I stood in this pulpit 51 years ago as a student. Thank you. As a student at Howard Divinity School, 
and the School of Social Work at Howard University. Theodore Ledbetter, bless his saint at heart, was one of the mentors that tried to teach me how to be a pastor. Doc, you failed, but it's okay. Uh, for those who can remember, that was 1966. That's before some of y'all were born. I'd ask you to raise your hand, but we in church, and so I don't want any, 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 any exaggerations today. But I do look out, and I saw some faces. And if I fail to mention you, forgive me. But Sister Ward, I remember you. Word, word, I remember you. May not remember names, but faces I can remember. Uh, don't worry, Doc, you're on your way. You'll get there. Uh, let's see. The smile on Brother Butler's face is not mistakable. I remember you, your hair was black. <laughs> Something happened, but it was black when I remember you. And there's a couple down front sitting behind my wife, and I think that's the McKenzie's? McDaniels. McDaniels. I knew it was Mac something. And it wasn't Mac Daddy. Okay. I knew it was something. All right. Uh, I was here at a time when Ulysses Houston wanted to take me under his wings as the associate pastor. And Dr. Ledbetter told me, leave him alone. Told him to leave me alone, too. And, and so we had a team here. And it was a team because this was almost no man's land for us because we were changing this community in the early 60s, if you can remember D.C. So it, it's good to be home. Uh, it's good that for 25 years you've given this young man here an opportunity to preach the word. And seriously now, I'm going to ask those of you who are able, and I noticed uh, that Reverend Hagler is a smart pastor. He gives you the page number. <laughs> I'm going to do something different. I got ordained 47 years ago, and I'm still in Genesis, so help me. Okay? That's the first book in the front of the book. So if you would go with me to the front of the book, let's go to Genesis 37, and I'm only going to do one verse, but it's based on the whole chapter. So when you get home, you can read the chapter if I don't do an exegetical, decent job. And he's already told you I got several clergy going back, including my wife, uh, who will let me know whether or not I did or didn't do what I was supposed to do. Genesis 37, verse 13. And I'm reading from the Bible. I don't know what you have in front of you, but I'm reading from the King James Bible. So it will be different. And Israel said unto Joseph, do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here am I. And then if you turn the page to page 34, you will see Genesis 39, and it's just a simple verse. 
It's verse 2. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Here ends the reading of the lesson for today. May God richly bless us as we have read and as we will continue to read his word in his precious son's name, Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. Well, how to handle your business because the fight is fixed. When I put this one together, I first looked at the fight that we're all in, and it's fixed. I knew I was coming to the nation's capital, and I knew I could do a political satire of the mess that we're all in. But y'all live it every day, so I don't need to do that. Y'all watch CNN and NBC and CBS and ABC and MSNBC and whatever else y'all watch. Y'all read the newspaper and you see us, and it's always about us. It's always about us. So today it's not going to be that way. I did that Thursday night preaching for Ministers for Racial, Social, and Economic Justice of the United Church of Christ. How to handle your business or handle your business because the fight is fixed. Genesis 39.2. The Lord was with Joseph and he prospered. Let me stop for a moment. This will not be about prosperity. This sermon has nothing to do with prosperity. And he lived in the house of his Egyptian master. I loved the story of Joseph so much that 46 years ago, this coming August, we named our son, his middle name is Joseph. I loved Joseph so much that I wanted to make this pericope part of my life. And so, even though my muscles are sore, they're working. Stop complaining. Even though I didn't sleep well last night, because I wasn't on my own mattress, I was on a hotel mattress. I did wake up this morning. Stop complaining. My wallet is not as full as it used to be, but my belly is hanging low because it's better than it's ever been. Stop complaining. I'm preaching to myself. Y'all just listen in. I may not have all that I think I want, but I have all that I need. My life is not perfect, but it's good because God has been, is, and promises will be good to me. Everyone in this room is gifted. But you know, some of you have never opened up your package. You'll get that when you get home. When we're in chapter 37 of our experiences, that's why you got to read the whole chapter. Because it's just not about Joseph, it's about you and I. When we're in chapter 37 of our experiences, we must be careful not to judge our circumstances too quickly. Someone might ask, what is chapter 37, pastor, all about? Well, it's about everything that broke out against Joseph. Everything 
that broke out against Joseph. If Joseph had misdiagnosed what God was up to in chapter 37, as some of us have, where would he be? You see, chapter 37 is when the world unraveled around Joseph. Now I'm looking at y'all and y'all must never have been in any difficulty in life whatsoever. Y'all must have never had life unroll and unfold before you. Y'all must have never messed up in life and needed to call on God. I don't know. Oh, this is the United Church of Christ. I forgot. I for, excuse me. I forgot my setting. It's when the world around Joseph unraveled. Everything fell apart. It's when the bottom fell out. It's when, excuse my language, but it's biblical language, it's when all hell broke loose. If Joseph had misdiagnosed what God was up to in chapter 37, he would have never made it through to chapter 50 in Genesis. So your task is to read that whole Joseph story and understand it's in the Bible because God is giving you an opportunity to be free of some of the mess that we got entrapped into. Some of the mess that is holding us back. But because he knew that there was a promise, because Joseph knew that there was a promise. Oh, you act like you don't know about God's promises. Well, let me, let me review a few of them. God promises never to leave you alone. Somebody ought to be shouting by now. Oh, this is the United Church of Christ. I forgot. God promised to love you when you can't even love yourself. God promises a rainbow after the storms in your life. I'm preaching to somebody in here, but y'all acting like I'm preaching outside the walls, but it's all right. I'm so glad God made me a promise. And God's promise is, preacher, weeping may endure for a night, but joy gonna come in the morning. Grab somebody's hand and tell them, remember this text. Don't quit too quickly. Y'all ain't grabbed nobody. Y'all ain't listening. It's all right. You're going to get grabbed by God in a minute. Don't misdiagnose what God is up to. Because when you think God has taken God's hand off of you, that's when God is working behind the scenes to make sure that you survive. Don't always depend on Donald Trump because he ain't found God yet. He ain't been anybody in one church since the 20th of January. And he was in that Episcopal church because that's tradition. He's been in more golf courses more of his own hotels, more than his own name places than he's been at the feet of Almighty God. But that's Donald Trump. I forgot. He gets confused between who God is and who he is. All right? You see, friends, I forgot I wasn't going to talk politics. You see, friends, I've been through something that didn't make sense in life, but my God like Joseph's God, made a way out of no way. Hasn't God done that for you? You see, it didn't make sense when Joseph's brothers sold him into slavery. Haven't we been sold? into slavery? 
Don't tell me about how free you are. Let me tell you, we're still in slavery. When he was accused of sexual harassment, that Joseph, it didn't make sense. It didn't make sense when Potiphar's wife had him thrown into prison because he wouldn't do what she wanted him to do for her. He'd rather worship his God. When his brothers didn't recognize him, it didn't make sense. When the cupbearer forgot Joseph. It's all in the book. It's in the story. It didn't make sense when some of us, under the sound of my voice, have been through some situations that just don't make sense. The divorce. I'm going to step on some toes, but it's okay. I'm lightweight. I am not like your pastor. (laughs) He heavyweight. The divorce didn't make sense. The unfair termination didn't make sense. When you were embarrassed in front of your loved ones, your family, your neighbors, your co-workers, your church members, it didn't make sense. When the wedding that didn't take place, after all the planning, all the preparation, and one spouse walked potential spouse walked off on the other potential. It just didn't make sense. The loss of a loved one didn't make sense. Oh, I can't go on anymore. You may have lost a loved one, but the one that loves you the most is still with you. The one who cares for you in the most is still with you. The promotion that someone else got When you thought you should have gotten it, it didn't make sense. The neglect by your parents as you were growing up didn't make sense. The abandonment you suffered didn't make sense. The rejection by the church didn't make sense. But somebody in here today ought to just throw their head back And open your mouth and give God some praise. Because you got up this morning. You're still breathing. And God has encountered you out. Your neighbors, your friends, your co-workers, your relatives may have given up on you. But your father, your heavenly father, is still with you. For That's God's providence. That's your life. That's tied up to a God who is still in charge of your life. Oh, you may have been a GS 17, 18. You may have been up high in life. You may have gotten a head so full that you thought you was in charge. But God was in charge of you getting to that position in life. You didn't do it by yourself. Oh, I I remember one guy who used to tout he was the greatest and all of the rest. But he was great because God made him great. He was never the greatest. He was just great. God's providence. I thank God for God's providence. Is there anyone here who can thank God that when I can't see God's hand, I can trust God's heart? Oh, you didn't hear that. When I can't see God's hands moving in my life, I can trust God's heart because God cares for you. That's God's providence. If you didn't get anything else out of this message, if you don't remember the text, if you don't remember the title, if you don't remember, just remember when God showed up and showed out in your life and turned things around. That's God's providence. Joseph, 
lived in his master's house, we're told. Joseph was captured just as we capture a lion in its youthful age as a cub. Do you know that a captured lion is just like countless numbers of our sisters and brothers in this community living beneath their appointed destiny. Why? Because they've been set up and brought down, and this is my language, by some pretty player haters. Think about it. You'll catch it. And the powers that continue to lock us out of the benefits of a better life. Brothers and sisters, it's time for you to handle your business. But also notice, if you will, that the lion also teaches us that if we are not careful, we will find ourselves in a climate that is designed to make something of us while at the same time training us not to benefit, but to make sure they make a profit off of our street corner training. What am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is that's why we have a, a prison population today in America that's larger than the population of several nations in this world. Oh, if you didn't get that, let me back up for a moment and do it one more time. In a real sense, when we are trained so that others can profit off of us, we are only like the lion in a circus. The only benefit the lion in a circus gets is his daily ration of food, or in America, food stamps. It receives only a ration, whereas the circus owners are making the money off of having the lion on show. So when you're on show, when you're on Front Street, because people want to say how diverse their company is, how diverse their church life is, how diverse their neighborhood is. Remember, somebody making some money having you on Front Street. I got it. Where'd I get it from? Chapter 37 of Genesis. The Bible says that Joseph, in a real sense, had found himself in a mess because he made the mistake and it's there. He made the mistake of telling his dream that God had given him to his brothers of all people. In other words, sometimes to handle your business, you need to learn to keep your mouth shut and do what God is telling you to do instead of trying to be the big dog on the block. You be the big dog when you do what God tells you to do because God's not going to tell you to do something that's going to be harmful to you. God's going to only tell you to do what's going to benefit you. See, I made a discovery about something, sisters and brothers. Whenever you are about to do something and you're on your way to being somewhere, you're going to attract some haters in your life. Sometimes it'll be brothers who are not educated but trained by the man to remind you you ain't nothing and you ain't never going to amount to anything. You heard that. Some of us heard it from our parents. Some of us heard it from the, our best friends. You're nothing and you'll never amount to anything. Brothers who will bring you down. I'm simply trying to say that we've got to learn to deal with those petty player haters out there, whether they're in the church or they're outside the church. They may be older people trying to protect some of the possessions that they have, 
that they really don't possess. Joseph tells his brothers his dream, and they threw him in a pit, left him for dead, and went about their training. Not their education, hear me, their training. I hope you're feeling what I'm trying to say. I love the Bible because this is just not Joseph's story, but it's our story. It's my story. It's your story. We understand what it means to live life and in the midst of living life, sometimes be let down, sometimes to be disappointed, sometimes to be messed over, sometimes to be set up and brought down, even by our friends, our family, our blood, and our kinfolk. Oh, y'all didn't have the family I had, but that's all right. The Bible goes on to tell us that Joseph shows up in Egypt as a slave. Well, you know, when I exegete, I make a problem, Dr. Vonado. My problem is I exegete. I, 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 I saw America. I didn't see Egypt. Oh, I didn't mess up. Let me go back to the text. That means that the Bible tells us that Joseph, Joseph's out there, that's male and female. That's how good God is. Showed up in America as a slave. He's there. We are here in the same city to keep a date with destiny because he has a mission to accomplish a destiny to fulfill, and a vision to bring into fruition. That's what I love about my God. God is so awesome that God can take any situation, any negative thing that may happen to us, and redemptively reweave it into his redemptive pattern. Oh, the text, the text in the book says that you meant it, for harm. You meant it for evil, but my God meant it for good. That's when you, as a child of God, are handling your business with faith. God Almighty will take care of you, and God will take care of you when you don't even want to take care of yourself. God will take what has happened to you and make it work out for you. God will take what happens to you and give you strength and the faith to make the best out of a bad situation. We're going to survive in America regardless of what Pennsylvania Avenue does. We're going to survive because God is not going to let us be downtrodden any longer. I just gave you something to shout about. Handle your business, children of God, because if you handle your business, God will bring the best out of you. If you make the best out of any situation you will, that you find yourself in, then God is setting you up for what is the best to come to you. So, Joseph went to Egypt as a slave. We came through America, through our ancestors, as slaves. But he had much work ethic, Joseph did. He worked so hard on his job, at his job, that the Bible says God gave him, God gave our ancestors success in whatever they did. Joseph ran an underground railroad before Harriet Tubman knew about an underground railroad. I like that because if we're going to be God's children in our new day, God is calling us to work as hard as we can, as faithfully as we can, wherever we are and whatever we do. The Bible tells us that God gave Joseph the resources to be successful in spite of being oppressed, 
down, out, homeless, underemployed, and unemployed. Joseph was faithful to God, and God was in turn faithful to Joseph. So I asked God when I was preparing this message, I said, Lord, this is long enough now. I can say amen, and I can sit down. And God said, boy, I ain't through with you. So y'all, y'all in trouble. So I asked God to close this message out, but God said, not so fast, son. Remember, just the other night, there was a, a fight, a boxing match, where Manny Pacquiao, the champion, lost his belt to an Australian young man. I think he was 17 and 0, younger person. There were millions of dollars spent. And after reading the results, I said that fight was fixed. That was a fixed fight. And so Pacquiao lost. And he was mad, and folks were mad. But I want to tell you as I close about another fixed fight. If you are a child of God, you need to know that the fight for us has already been fixed. Tell that to the president. The fight is fixed, and we the winners. So, so when you have, so all that you have to do is to make sure that the fight ends. And as it ends, that you're still standing on your own feet. How did the fight of life get fixed? Well, I'm glad somebody asked me. So I'm glad you asked. Jesus, Jesus fixed the fight. You see, God entered into the picture and allowed Isaiah to handle the pre-fight publicity. Isaiah announces over the microphone, watch out for unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. Unto us the government, Donald Trump, shall be upon his shoulders, not yours. They will call him Wonderful Counselor, Almighty God, the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father. Then, then, then it was time for the fight. John the Baptist was the ring announcer. The angels sang the cosmic anthem choir. Glory to God in the highest goodwill towards men and women. John then announced the fighters, as all fight announcers do. John said, and in this corner is the deceiver, the devil himself. Evil personified your president in this corner. And in this corner, behold, here is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Let's get ready to rumble. They sound the bell. Round one, Jesus comes out dancing, ready to go. That's Jesus. He comes out, but the devil... Hold on. I wish you could see Jesus in my sanctified imagination. Jesus is floating like a bee and stinging like... Or dancing and floating like a butterfly and stinging like a bee. I got it backwards. (laughs) Satan hits Jesus. Remember... Satan hits Jesus with genocide. But Jesus ducked down into Egypt. I'm in the text, folks. I'm in the text. It's here. Round two. Satan tried to destroy Jesus by signifying about his daddy. But Jesus said, I got to be about my father's business. So that's round two. Round three. Satan tries to hit Jesus with temptation. Jesus says, I got enough of your mess, for it is written. 
By round 15, y'all thought I was going to go through each one of these rounds, <laughs> and y'all be here for another half hour. <laughs> By round 15, Satan said, this is my last chance. I'm going to knock this Jesus with my death punch. Satan hit Jesus. Jesus went down. Friday, count one. Saturday, count two. But before he could say Sunday, count three, Jesus rose with all power in his hands and said, Ah, devil, behold, I am alive forevermore. I was dead, but I am alive forevermore. And because Jesus lives, we can face tomorrow, Donald, even without you, even with you. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know who holds the future and life is worth the living just because Jesus lives. You see, the fight of life is fixed. So sisters and brothers, this is the end. Handle your business because you're the victors in a world that doesn't know how victorious we have been, how victorious we are, and with God, how victorious we can be. May God bless us. Amen.
to spread the word about our service at 9.30 a.m. Amen. Uh, and uh, uh, Reverend, Reverend Holland, thank you so much again. And, and Reverend Holland, he reminded me on when he preached that Ministers for Racial Social Justice. He kept saying, I'm going to say this and I'm going to sit down. He went on three times saying that, that he's going to say that and he's going to sit down, right? And, uh, and, and, and so he did a little bit of that today. Uh, the spirit gets in him. He reminded me of a story, a quick story. You know, there was a group of folks, they said, we want to go and we want to see how other folks uh, do their religious traditions. And so the first stop was to a synagogue. And, 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 and in the midst of the service, they saw the rabbi take the scroll out and parade it around, and people were touching it and kissing it. And they said, well, what is that? What does that mean? They said, oh, it's the, it's the idea that the, that the word is revered and loved. And, and so then they went to a Catholic church, and, and, and the priest comes out with the incense and just waving the incense around. And they said, well, what does that mean? They said, well, that's, that's, that symbolizes uh, uh, the Holy Spirit. And then they went to Reverend Holland's church, and, and Reverend Holland got up to preach, and he took off his watch, and they said, oh, he took off his watch and put it on the pulpit. What does that mean? Not a thing under the sun. <laughs> when you're friends, you can bust on each other like that, right? right? We love each other, and I give thanks. <laughs> I give thanks. Let us prepare for our benediction, Reverend Luther. No, uh, why don't you lead it, Reverend Oscar? Lead a benediction. Oh, gracious God, we thank you for this day and this time that we spent together worshiping your holy name and word and spirit and truth. We thank you for the preaching of each word. We ask your blessings upon this congregation we call Plymouth. Bless this shepherd, one of the greatest leaders in the world. We thank you for him, gracious God, Brother Dr. Brady. We ask that you continue to give him strength to stand in the gap and fight for those that are unprivileged and not that. Now to know the wise God, as we leave this place but know from your sight, walk with the walkers and ride with the riders, and bless be the tide to bind us together, and let the sweet communion of your Holy Spirit Rest in the bodies, your people, henceforth and forevermore. And we say to God, Amen. 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 Number 400, 640.